All right, welcome back to Flashpoint. After only eight months on the job, the North Carolina Republican Party's executive director will leave the party after the March primaries. Odd timing, don't you think? Jonathan Sink hired back in July, replacing Dallas Woodhouse. And this week, Sink was hired uh, as Gaston County's in-house attorney. He says this is, quote, pure family. He is from the Charlotte area and described the move as uh, return home. All right, uh, Larry, this does strike me as, as odd timing. <laughs> There's nothing odd about it, frankly. I think we, with, uh, with a job like this, Jonathan's background is, is absolutely superb for this. Served in, the, in a role as, as a lobbyist and governmental relations director at the, at the uh, school board. Did the same at the county, then went to work for the speaker's office, then went to work for the DPI's office. Took on the role as the executive director in a time when nobody else really wanted it. Righted the ship. Now, I think he should get to return home considering Gaston County wanted him to come back and do this job. And frankly, that's a 15 to 30 year job. I have nothing but the highest of praise and compliments for Jonathan Sink. I think he is an absolute pure professional, an absolutely fantastic attorney, someone who's going to do a great job for Gaston County. And he helped right the ship of the Republican Party with Michael Watley. Okay. I'm glad he's leaving it in a better place than when, than when he found it. Just wanted to get it out there? Yeah. All right, let's talk about something else. It's been a, a bit controversial here in uh, the, the city over the last week. And that is tying up a dog in your yard still going to be allowed here in Charlotte. This week, city leaders voted to ban tether, not, not to, to ban. ban tethering in Queen City. Instead, they're going to uh, the ability to keep the current ordinance, which requires for dogs to have access to food and water and shelter. Tethers, I, I believe, must be at least 10 feet in length. Now, animal activists say the council's decision was, is going to hurt animals. Council, though, countered over equity issues, and not everybody can afford if it's necessarily, and not everybody would be treated fairly under this ban. Take a listen. I'm really concerned about whether or not we can even enforce it, and I'm also concerned about the selective enforcement when we do. Dogs are going to be forced to live outside, tethered in all elements. None of us here wants to see an animal suffer, and I think I want to emphasize that. There's nobody here that's indifferent to the suffering of an animal. I have a discussion. Luckily for us, we have a member of city council here as part of our guest. Uh, explain to me what was the struggle here for you guys? So I think like a lot of issues, we all come into this with our opinion. And my opinion was, yeah, absolutely. We need to strengthen our dog tethering laws so that you can't leave a dog tethered more than a, a certain amount of time. Because it is starting with the, the notion that if you're going to tell people they can't tether their dogs and they're going to have to put up a fence and there is an organization that will do that for free but we don't know what their capacity is to do it so but my you know going into it my feeling was well let's and I called my colleagues that day let's what do you think about putting a time frame in place and then when we looked at the data that our staff had given us some cities have at night you can't tether some have during the day that you can't tether so I'm not sure what's the right answer for that should it be supervised so when it came to the discussion that we all had you know throughout the day and uh, and leading up to that council members like um, Malcolm Graham Braxton Winston Renee Johnson all had very strong feelings about it so I called neighbors in Druid Hills I called neighbors in neighborhoods that we were told that there is a problem yeah. and they said this is a cultural thing that you're going to have to teach people that it's wrong so to Malcolm's point if we don't even enforce the ordinance that we have we need to start with that and enforce it and teach people and in, if we see that there's a problem bring in this nonprofit and get them to help put up a fence whatever it is but you know it, it became a an issue of um, a racial issue and an issue of yeah. equity and if that's the case then we've got to give it some thought so the idea was that we will monitor this for the next six months and actually record the calls that came in. Yeah. Some of the calls that came in, um, most of them were about restraint, yeah. but those included dogs not being restrained. What I know I'm just asking you, not the whole council here, what, where would you like to see this end up, say a year or two years yeah. from now? I personally think that there should be a limit on the amount of time a dog is tethered. And, and we can't presume that people understand that. We've got to work with people to get them to that point. So I don't have a problem with going back at some point and saying, all right, now we know what the data is. Now we know how often it happens, where the problems are. We've tried to work with those residents and, and ultimately get to the point where we've got a restriction on the amount of time you can leave a dog outside and at what temperature. It's all very helpful. That's why I do like this show. Yeah. <laughs> the show. The answer is local it issues. Time, that's good. There were several times during this last. That's very deliberative too, like and I think that's a great. That's a, that's uh, a exact great example. over yeah. some of the issues, so I'm glad I've had a chance to to get you say some of that stuff. All right, more flashpoint after this.